All right, there we go. Hey, everybody. And okay. All right, so welcome. Oh, and Siri just reminded me as well. Isn't that nice of Siri? I gave Siri the Irish accent. No reason, it just sounds cool. I also did that. Yep. Yeah, I, I listened to all of the accents and I thought Irish, that's probably, that's the one that I like the most. So I'm gonna go with that one. All right, so let's get, hold on, before I do that, I'm just going to turn on my do not disturb. There we go. Okay, so today we are going to learn about cookies and not the, uh, unfortunately, the, the, the delicious kind. Um, it is the, uh, the web kind. And we're gonna talk about why we need them. So let me, as I always do, share my screen. All right, so even before we talk about cookies, I'm going to give you an, uh, a metaphor for, for how cookies work. So over the last couple of years, we've all been using video conferencing a lot, or at least I have, I'm sure you have as well. It is very much like an in-person conversation, right? We're, we're talking, anybody can talk at any time. We're communicating. Uh, I know who you are because I see your faces and that's, that's great. But the web doesn't work like that. The web works more like a letter. So when you write a letter, you have to write the address of the person that you're writing the letter to every single time, otherwise the person's not going to get it. You write the content of the letter and then you send it. If you're lucky, the person will read the letter and send it back to you. Or if you're me, uh, my mailbox is always full of bills. But that is very much like how the, uh, the web works and how web pages work. So this is what we call um, stateless. I think I mentioned this last week, the, the web is stateless. So every time we pull up a web page, the web page is, doesn't really have any way by default at least of telling who I am. So let me open up my browser. Uh, and I'm just going to go to, uh, what's a good one? Let's go to Dig. Anybody remember Dig? It's still around. Um, so this is a, a page that gives a bunch of like little news stories uh, or, or little interest stories. And uh, it used to be the biggest thing on the internet and then it completely died and now Reddit does what it used to do, but it still exists in this format. Okay, so when I go to this page, when I clicked on the, the link, I received a copy of the page as it existed at the time that I went there. It could be that in the last 30 seconds or so, somebody has put a new story up on the page. I'm not going to know that until I refresh the page and I might never refresh the page. So this is, brings in a, um, the problem of how do we know who people are? We want to know who they are because maybe we want to provide services up to only some people, generally paying customers, although it doesn't have to be. So how do web pages let me know who they are? 
Anybody have any, uh, want to give me any guesses? And if you say cookies, you will be right. But um, see, oh yeah. If Holly smiles at my joke, I know it was almost good. Almost good. Right. So this page has cookies. It knows it's me. And the reason I came to this site is I'm actually, I think I'm logged in. Am I logged in? No, I'm not logged in. Yeah. Great. So I could be logged in, but I'm not. Um, the site, does, it doesn't really matter whether you're logged in or not. So no point in, in logging in. Um, let's have a look at the cookies that I got sent. So I'm going to come over, open the inspector, and I believe not memory. Um, work. I can never remember which one it is. It's slightly different. There we go, storage. It's storage here, and on Chrome, it's something slightly different, which is why I get confused. Here, let's open up Chrome. If I go to the Chrome Dev Tools, it's going to be application. There we go. So it's the same, same sort of thing, just a different browser. Okay, so over here, we see, among other things, and I'll talk about those other things in a minute, but see that there are cookies. All right, so let's look at these cookies. Uh, one, my, well, technically it's only one cookie. Cookies are set by domain. So this is a cookie set by dig.com. If I pull this open a little more, you can see that there are two values. It's a key value pair, just like in a regular uh, JavaScript object. So we've got dig session.sig, which is this, and dig session, which is this. Even though I've not logged in, dig wants to know that I've connected so that it could provide me with this, a better service. So this is why we have this session right here. The session is kept by the server at the dig side. And every time I connect to dig.com, all of the cookies for dig.com are sent with my connection. So even though I have no idea what these are and no really easy way of telling what these are, uh, I'm sure they mean something to the people over at DIG. Uh, then this is great for being able to keep track of where I am, what I'm doing. Uh, one of the dangers of relying on cookies as a web developer are they are what we call ephemeral. We can just delete them. So here, delete all. There now, now the next request I make to dig.com will not have any cookies associated with it. So let's see, does anything change when I refresh? No, not really. Someone dressed up as a T-Rex went inside the field museum and broke down seeing an old friend. Okay. See, that, that might be fun to watch later. I, I, don't, I don't look at Facebook, so I gotta go somewhere to get my, my these, these silly little videos and things. Okay, uh, cookies, and let me just refresh. And um, open that up again. So now that I've gone again, it's reset some new cookies for me. So um, yes, they're gobbledygook, but they're slightly different gobbledygook than they were last time. And these are set by the dig server. Uh, one of the things about cookies is that they have an expiry. So this cookie expires on, at this time. And what that means is that after that date, if I go to this web page, this cookie will not be sent along with the request. Uh, 
a bunch of other things, HTTP only, secure. Most of these you don't really have to worry too much about. Oh, it's the 30th of November already. Wow. I wonder if I got paid. <laughs> my wife laughs at all my jokes, which is why I married her. Okay, so, so you're going to hear my wife laugh at my really stupid jokes. Okay, so that's cookies. What are the rest of these things? The uh, rest of these are actually newer uh, technologies that have been implemented in HTML and HTTP browsers, basically. We've got session storage. We've got local storage. And I'm clicking on these to see if there's anything. Oh, look. So local storage has information in it and bottom sign up modal value one dig user ID. It knows my user ID. What? But the, the, again, this is information. Where is this information being held? It's being held in my browser. Um, it doesn't happen as much anymore, but in the uh, not so distant past, when you were having problems with your web browser, people would often tell you, just delete all your cookies. And you would go in, you would delete all your cookies and it might fix the problem. But one thing it definitely did do is you were logged out of every site that you wanted to be logged into. And that's because cookies keep login information encrypted, but it's login information. So local storage and session storage are a little bit like cookies, except they are not sent to the server with every connection request. The, they are stored locally. Session storage will be uh, deleted when you close the page or close your browser. Local storage will live for however long. Um, uh, there is no expiry date on local storage, but once again, as a web developer, you can't rely on values being kept here because again, I, I, run my, uh, I run my browser and I can delete all of the information because it's mine. Uh, Index DB, I have never seen anybody use this, but you actually have uh, access to an honest to goodness SQL database on in browsers. Um, it was implemented uh, uh, for, with HTML5, and uh, I'm sure there are good uses for it. I've never found one. And finally, cache storage. Uh, it's not really certain what this is. Uh, generally, it's for um, keeping things even more temporarily than cookies, but I've never had opportunity to use that one. Okay, cookies. Um, let's go to another site. This is, this, by the way, this isn't a, an advertisement or anything. This is a site that I go to uh, to learn new technologies. And right now they have a course release extravaganza, a course a day for the, it's like the advent calendar uh, courses. So it's a course a day for the month of December. And the reason I brought you here is because I'm logged into this page. You can see, here I am, sign in or create a free account. I already have an account. I'm not going to worry about it. But once again, I have cookies and I actually have more cookies than just for Egghead. There is egghead.io, which is the name of the site, but also Stripe and Stripe Network. Uh, there are cookies there with nothing in them, it seems, which is a little bit weird. But Stripe is actually how I pay for the service, right? So this is something I pay for on an annual basis, and they do it through Stripe, which is a payment service. And so in here, these cookies are even more cryptic than the previous ones. Ahoy visit. Somebody's got a nautical theme going on here. 
Um, but, oh, hey, my player preferences. So uh, if if I, that's cool because it, I, I watch videos on it and it remembers like what volume I like. Very cool, very cool. So these, there are a lot more cookies here and there's really no limit except for um, you know, total number of, or total amount of information kept in a cookie must be under, I believe it's 10K, which in the old days of computers was a lot. Uh, these days, I can't write my name for 10K. It's almost nothing. Uh, it's like 10,000-ish bytes of information. Uh, local storage and, and session storage is limited by default to one meg, but it can ask for more information if it needs it. All right. Let's, uh, I'm just going to close that. Okay. So we know what a cookie is. We know why we want to use it. Give me some examples of why you would want to use a cookie as a web developer. If you're a web developer, why would you want to, what sort of information would you keep on in a cookie? Um, if somebody's going to one site, I think you can also track if they're going to similar sites, which I guess is useful for advertisers. Or is that something else that they, um, it's like multi-site something? Right, so remember that a site can only read information from cookies that it has the domain of. So Egghead can only read the Egghead cookies. Stripe can only read the Stripe cookies. Egghead has no access to the Stripe cookies. I have access to all the cookies because it's my browser. If you, what if you have like multiple sites owned by the same company though? Uh, as long as they have the same domain, you're fine. If they have right. different domains, then you are going to have to uh, be clever at figuring out how to share information. Right. Now, the reason Stripe was there is because Stripe has a script on that page that is served from a Stripe server. Okay. And this is quite common. Matter of fact, if you go to, um, I'm not even going to try, but if you go to any newspaper site, you're going to have like a thousand different cookies from all these different ad trackers. Right. And that's how they keep track of, so they know uh, what sites you've gone to that they have advertisements on. So this gotcha. is one of the reasons why Google is worth more than I think the rest of the planet combined. It's because they have all that information and they use that to help with their advertising. Right. Well, um, cookies basically store information in forms in terms of data, like um, say you're filling out a form in searching website, you're entering your name, your last name, and yep. so and so information. So then when you revisit the site, it basically remembers that. Yep, like that. that's a very good use for a cookie. Um, it also would help the uh, the site that you're signing up for. How many times have you gone to sign up for something and then halfway through you've said, eh, forget it. I'm not gonna do it. That really pisses off the SEO people, uh, search engine optimization people at these companies, but they have a way of keeping track by setting cookies. So they know where you are. So when you go back to that login page or, or that sign up page, Everything that you filled in already could be already filled out. Oh, hey, you've put in your name and email address. Great, you put that in, but you haven't filled in this other information. We'll just leave the blank for you. Okay. So the main reason I wanted to, I'm talking about cookies today is for authentication. So there, Authentication is a complex subject and we're actually going to, I'm gonna demo uh, an authentication scheme. Uh, I am not going to put any security on it whatsoever. So don't ever do this in the real world because there are, you don't want to keep people's uh, 
passwords in plain text ever. Uh, their big companies have, uh, you, you've probably heard, uh, I think uh, Sony had a leak a couple of years ago where like everybody who was on the PlayStation network had their information leaked. And that kind of sucks if you're Sony. Um, and every so often you'll hear of another one. Uh, so there have been lots of them. Uh, my advice as a developer is if you never have a password on your server, then you never have to worry about it. Uh, so generally I like to use third party logins such as Twitter or Facebook or Google so that they can worry about all the authentication and they have to worry about keeping passwords safe because so many people, and I, 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 I may be talking about you, so many people reuse passwords from site to site. That's a bad habit and you probably know it's a bad habit, right? But that still doesn't, it means people still do it, so. What I would recommend is use a password, uh, an app to keep your passwords in. I use LastPass and the company I work, I work for uses pass, uh, one password. There are lots of them out there. Uh, I consider it useful enough that I actually pay money every year for it. It's well, well worth it for me for, to keep my sense of uh, security and also, Last I checked, I had over 100 passwords. I'm not going to remember 100 passwords, not 100 unique ones at least. Now, all I have to remember is the password to my password vault. If I lose that password, I'm screwed. But at least I only have to remember one. So how do we set cookies? I've got a note here, somebody wrote down, it's short for magic cookie. I don't know why you would call it a magic cookie. Um, back in the day when they were building all these, these technologies, they had to come up with something to call it and they didn't know. So magic cookie, I guess was it. So how do we read a cookie? Well, luckily uh, it's actually quite easy on the server side, so. Let's um, I'll tell you what, let's create a, uh, a server and we will add some authentication and I'll show you how we're going to set and we're going to read the cookies. Okay, so let's, okay, there we go, npm init dash y. Okay, gives me a package JSON, super, and inside this package JSON, I'm going to install a few things. I'm going to install Express. I'm going to install Morgan because I like uh, the, the messages it gives me. Uh, I'm going to install EJS for templating, and I'm also going to install Cookie Parser. You find the word parse a lot in uh, development. It basically means reading or understanding. So this is how we understand cookie. Okay, so I've got all that set up. So let's set up a base server. So new file. So set up my index.js. All right, uh, to create an express server, does anybody remember what I have to do first? You have to uh, require it. Yep.
and I'm going to bring in uh, Morgan. You spelled Morgan wrong after the const. Morton. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So I have required everything that I need here. I don't need to pull in EJS because I only need to pull, uh, have that for templates. All right. So uh, Morgan's still wrong. Sorry. I might just leave it like that just to, no, it's okay. I am the worst typist in the world, but that's okay. All right, so let's uh, set up our app. Now I misspelled const. All right, so I've set up the app and at the bottom, I, I love doing this first, even though it's generally at the bottom of the file. We're going to do an at dot listen. And we're going to put in a port. Let's, um, let's put it in as a variable. Let's use uh, 5,000. Okay, so we're gonna listen on the port and I'm gonna use the callback to there we go. Perfect. All right. Before I go any further, let me just run it. Uh, I'm going to run it with Nodemon again because remembering to restart Node, everything I don't have to remember is best for all of us. Waiting for crash. Okay. Oh, address is in use. Ah. My day job. What can I say? There we go. Running on port 5,500. 5, Great. Um, now, I nothing's going to appear. Let's bring open the uh, the browser once again. Um, new window, sure. And But the good news is, is that I'm getting an express error message. So I know express is running. Why am I getting that error? Anyone? Because uh, you don't have a handler for the get request. Exactly, exactly. So let's, uh, let's get a, a basic app set up. Um, what I'm going to do, we're going to do uh, app dot get. When we go to the the slash route, can, can you um, zoom in? Make the oh yeah, absolutely. Thank you for asking. Does that help? Is that better? Yeah, Great. That's fine. Super. Sorry about that. All right, so once we do the app get, I'm gonna do the whole uh, REQ, RES. And we are going to, uh, I'm gonna render something, res.render. And I'm going to render a home page. All right, 
and what got broken? Like, oh, that, that broke. Wreck, Wreck. hold on, something else is broken. What did I do? No, there we go. I opened the wrong type of brackets. Okay, so let's get a, let's create a view for the homepage. Okay, so uh, if I'm gonna use uh, EJS, I need to set up my template engine. So let me just get that done. In fact, I'm gonna set up all my middleware here. So app use. That it's dev. and I'm going to uh, use the right uh, encoding, which I messed up last week. And I can pass it a uh, configuration object and say it's ended. Uh, and, uh, we're going to do app dot use. I'm just going to bring it in now. But I'm not using it yet. Okay, and finally, app dot set. All right. So let's create a view for that. All right, so let's create a views folder. And in here, let's create our homepage, new file. Okay, and here I'm just going to put in my skeleton HTML. We'll say home and so. I always put that as the first thing in any page that I make, just so I can troubleshoot the right uh, the right bits. Okay, let's go and see if my page shows up. Perfect, great. Okay, so let's um, let's get some uh, information that's going to be we're going to use for our. Um, our cookies, all right, uh, because I'm going to show, uh, we're going to set, um, let's say favorite animal, that, 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 that's good, let's, uh, let's set up everybody's favorite animal, so I'm going to go back into the index, <laughs> and <laughs> okay. Or even before I do that, I, Sean. Sorry, Sean. Yes, please. Uh, no, I, I, uh, I, I, sorry, the other Sean, the S H A U N, as opposed to the S E U N. We, we, we have people with the same name in this class. All right. So I've got my app here. And let's. <laughs> what I'm going to do, I'm just having, uh, making sure I'm doing the right thing. Great. So let's go back here. 
to the home. And what I'm going to say is uh, P and let's do this. This is very strange to type. And we're going to say, Animal. So how am I going to pass that variable into the page? Let's refresh this. Okay, so that's fine. It's telling me there's an error, animal is not defined. So great. So if I do want to have an animal, where do I put it? In the get road. I think that's reasonable. So let's go into the get route. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass in. I'm going to create a um, a variable. We're going to call it um, I could do it this way just put it as a literal. Um, I'm going to say fox. Okay, so we're now passing down fox into the file and that should, there we go, is fox. That's poor English, but it, the code works. The code work. So um, I can now I can pass that in. So that's great. Um, but let's have a way of uh, making that variable. Um, how do I do that? That's an excellent question. I need more windows. <laughs> All right. So let's get this working. Um, we're going to set an animal, or we're going to set a cookie, sorry. We're going to set a cookie for the animal, OK? So instead of doing it like this, I'm going to come here, and I am going to say in the response, we're going to set cookie, or sorry, not set cookie, it's just red stock cookie. I'm going to pass it animal. Zebra. Zebra. Okay. And in, right, so I've set that cookie. So now I am going to, now once I've set the cookie, matter of fact, let's do put it in a different route, just for fun. And we will do, I'm just going to copy this. I'm going to put it right there. And we're going to say, um, uh, once I've set that cookie, I'm going to redirect to slash. Okay. So the only point of this endpoint 
is to set the cookie. So now once I've set the cookie, I need to access the cookie. I can access the cookie by doing this. Uh, so it's in the request object, which means it's going to be sent from the browser. Take out of your, your head for a second that my server and my browser are on, on the same computer. Pretend my server is a million miles away. Not a million, because that'd be far too much latency, but uh, we're going to... Okay, and I can spell and me mal. I'm having one of those moments where I'm looking at a word I've seen spelled a million times and it looks wrong, but you know what I mean, right? Uh, and we'll say elephant. And I'm gonna come down here and instead of saying animal is equal to fox, I'm gonna say animal, animal. And what's an easier way of, of for me to uh, put this in? Just animal. You got it. Also, you wrote elephant. Yeah, well, elephant is the more deadly version of the elephant. I say leave it like that. I'm I'm gonna leave it like that. It. Absolutely. Yeah. No, elephant. Uh it's my um now I wanna I want to Google it and see if somebody else has like written made a, a an image of an elephant because that that's too cool to not exist. Okay, let's see what happens. So if I come back here, refresh, says my favorite animal is snake. How did that happen? I know exactly how that happened. That's hilarious. It happened because when I was practicing, I forgot to delete the cookie. So no cookies. See, I love it when I make errors like that. Okay. So my favorite animal is elephant. So in order to change that, all I need to do is I need to go to the slash set cookie endpoint, and it will set the cookie. And we can actually have a look at it right here. Localhost 5500 has set a cookie name, animal, value, zebra, or zebra, depending on if you want to annoy an American or not. So this is a very basic uh, set and get on a cookie. We've set the cookie here by going res.cookie and pass in the key and the value that we want to set. I can continue to set different key values as much as I want, and that'd be fine. As long as it's not more than 10K, we're golden. How much is this? It looks like it's 11 bytes. Three, six, yep, six bytes plus five bytes, 11 bytes. Okay. Um, so that's not a super useful um, thing to do, just because you've never gone to a set cookie endpoint. So let's make in, uh, let's refactor the set cookie so that we can set any uh, animal that we want. Okay. So instead of doing set cookie, I'm going to change this to animals. And I'm going to put a slash colon name. Okay, and what have I done here? What, what's name in this case? It's a variable. Exactly. So I got to pull that in.
All right, and now all I need to do is change that from zebra or zebra to So as easy as that, I can now set my cookie to whatever I want. So I can come over here and I can go slash animals slash uh, and it sets the cookie. Animal is now a chinchilla and it redirected me to my home page and so now whatever animal i want to have up there we can put up there how cool is that but say i get bored and i want to um delete this cookie not by going into here and deleting the cookie i want an endpoint that deletes a cookie Okay, what do you think a good way of doing that would be? How, how can I create an endpoint to clear my cookie and redirect me back to the homepage without a cookie? So I can see Elephang again, because that's, that's great. Any ideas? With uh, a post, a post listener. Could do that. Um, yeah. And have that link to a button on the page. Okay. Let's, uh, let's do that. I, I, I like it. So we're going to create an endpoint and we're going to call it slash clear. And we're going to do the REQ comma RES. And then I'm going to clear the cookie, which is oddly enough. Clear, hold on, what I'm back. What? going to clear the cookie and I have to pass in the key I want to clear. All right. And then I'm just going to redirect back to the home page. Now I could use a post, but Get is better in this case. And why do you think get is better? Because uh, you, you don't need uh, anything sent over the body. Exactly. I'm not posting any new information. I'm just touching an endpoint to have it do something. So let me change this from at to post to at dot get. Right. And I tell you what, so manually going to uh, a page is so passe. So let's come in here and let's actually create a list. So U L L I uh, times five. Sure. This, by the way, is called Emmet. And it, you will learn to love it. So I'm saying I'm going to create an unordered list. Under that unordered list, I want five list items. Okay. And under each of those, I want an A. There we go. Whoa, how cool is that? Okay, so I'm going to do uh, I'm going to do some animals. So uh, Holly, what's your favorite animal? Shark. Shark. Do, 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 do. 
Uh, Brianna, what's your favorite animal? Uh, cats. Okay, Abby, what's your favorite animal? I can't hear you, Abby. A dog. Dog, okay. All right, Jang, what's your favorite animal? Panda. Good one. And we're gonna go with Todd. What's your favorite animal? Let's say monkey. All the good ones are taken. There, there are a lot of good animals out there. Pangolin, for instance. Okay, so now I've created a list. I've got the href for each of these. So let's go to our page, refresh. All right. So currently the cookie's still set for chinchilla. Oh, and what I'm also going to do is I'm going to put in another link. Uh, we'll just do a slash, uh, I put it at slash clear, I believe. Yep, slash clear. And Hold on, hold on. This one, right. And you know, I'm not going to make it an A. I'm going to make it a button. Actually, no, I am going to make it an A because I am routing to an endpoint. All right. So. This is a little more practical. So we've got all our animals here. I'm gonna refresh. I'm gonna clear the animal. Goes back to Elephang, my favorite new animal. Shark, cat, dog, panda, monkey. Sorry, John, um, how is Elephang set? Can I Elephang is set as the default here. Let's have a look at the logic for the home page. The animal is going to equal whatever the cookie says for animal. Or if there is no cookie, we're going to set it to Elephang. Okay, thanks. I just saw the light bulb go off over three or four heads. So that's that's good. Thank you, Todd, for asking. Yeah, exactly. I thought that's a comment. You you're commented the elephant. I was like, look, I thought I never. No, this is ever. this is a logical or. So uh, th this is quite common. If this is true, then this will get returned. If this is false then it will go to the opposite side and, and return that, okay? So your, uh, your or uh, symbol is actually two vertical lines, right? But your font has made it. Yes, yes, it's italicized the vertical lines. I could go back and, and change my uh, settings, but I actually have to do real coding on this machine. So I'm gonna leave my settings the way they are. Uh, but yeah, if that, anything like that does confuse anybody, please ask me and I'd be more than happy to help. Okay, how awesome is that? So let's take a break. Let's take a 10 minute break. We'll go till five after the hour. And yeah, get up, stretch, get a coffee, say hello to your family. Do whatever it is you want to do for the next 10 minutes. Getting all excited then. Hello, Sean. <laughs>
Hey, John, how are you? I am well. How are you? So, sorry I'm late. I was actually de- I was uh, on a mentor call <laughs> that I literally I got on at like nine this morning or like shortly thereafter. And I was on the call for like an hour and a half. It was a long time just dealing with like tiny app stuff. <laughs> okay, so, no worries. No worries. So yeah, you made apologies it. Apologies for the for the lateness, but I was like, I need to, I, I was like, okay, well, at least you record your lecture. Yep. Whereas like sometimes getting in the queue is like really, really hard. I, while, I understand. So. I understand. <laughs> okay. In okay, theory, awesome. I should do the queue as well, but I'm too busy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, like once, uh, once have you, did you record from the very beginning? Yeah. I, okay, I okay, remember cool. this time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, amazing. Once, uh, like, once I'll, I'm obviously going to stay on for the rest, but then I'll go back and just kind yeah. of watch yeah. the watch the intro that, part. That's fun. <laughs> so, you you you've seen all the fun stuff. The intro <laughs> part was a little dry, but you know this is the fun. That's stuff. okay. It's all it's all worthwhile because it's all just like going through it again and again, right? That helps it stick. <laughs> yep. Oh, absolutely. So, Okay. Okay. Thank you for your patience and apologies again. (laughs) No worries, man. No worries. Good.
Sam, this is twice you've been first today. Holly, I, I just want you to know that now my entire house is humming the baby shark song and it's all your fault. Yeah, huh. no, it's yours. I, I don't know what the baby shark song is. You don't know baby shark? No. <laughs> oh, are you in for a treat? Uh, no. After class, um, <laughs> be prepared to lose your mind. Uh, Google baby shark, I think. At one point it was the most popular uh song like beating gangnam style oh on youtube <laughs> okay i will definitely check that yeah, out yeah, yeah, and yeah. never forget it <laughs> okay i'm used to having somebody monitor uh the participants for me so i don't have to uh remember to let people in so i apologize uh page for leaving you outside in the cold for a bit? It's okay, it was just for a minute. I just switched my browser. Okay, okay. If you switched it to Internet Explorer, then we can't be friends anymore. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we now have an app that we can go and set our favorite animals. How much fun is that? All right, it's, it's kind of fun, but not terribly fun. But you know what is fun? Authentication. So let's create a very simple and very, um, again, this is not something you should ever use in real life, but we're, we're having fun and we're learning the basics. So let's, let's do this. So, Let's create a new page. So let me create a new file here. I'm going to call it Why does it always do that? EJS. So this is going to be our secret page. We don't want people to get in unless they have they're registered. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna have a, a login page, and if you log in successfully, you can see our secret page. So let me set up our secret page. All right, we'll say secret, and here I'm gonna put an image. And the source is going to be that, and it's going to be okay. 
All right, so uh, what do I now have to do next? If I want to actually go to this page, what do I have to do? Create a route. You got it. So let's create a route. I'm going to go into index and I'm going to create a route for here. I'm just going to put Okay, and we're going to call it app.get last secret. REQ, RES, and we're going to just do a uh, dot render okay. let me just check to make sure I am not yep that's all I need okay and I also need to spell secret right So let's go and make sure that it works. So if I go to slash secret, it's our little secret. Any uh, Peter Laurie fans here? I, I love old movies. All right, so that's cool. But obviously, I can get to that page without logging in. And that's not what I want to do. So let me, by the way, uh, if you put an underscore, that means you're not going to be using that parameter. So uh, this is just a way to keep things simple. I do need to set put in two parameters in this callback. First is always going to be the request, but if I'm never using request, I could put an underscore in front of it and it knows, oh yeah, he meant to do it that way. All right, so let's go and even above our routes at, at all, I'm going to create a user. Okay. Okay, and what we're going to. So let's create and I'm going to create this as an object and you'll see why in a little bit. So we're going to create a user called John. That's me. And I'm going to give it an email. Uh, And I'm going to give it a super secret password. Please don't log into my bank account and, uh, and take all my money. Okay, so I've got users. So users are going to be known by a name like that. Okay, great. So let's get the login set up. So what I want to do is I want to only be able to access the secret if a user is, exists and is logged in and sends a cookie. So let's, let's do this. So I'm going to say, well, I need a login route uh, in order to set that, but let, yeah, let's, let's do a login route first. So, so login, uh, I do need a post here. I need a post because I'm going to be sending a username and a password. So I'm going to send a post and I'm going to send it to the slash login link.
Okay. And we're going to render, we're not going to render, we're going to redirect. And we're going to redirect to slash secret. So how do I get to slash secret? So what I do need to do is I need to have uh, a way of getting an email and password. So, all right, const email equals. So what's it going to be? I'm gonna send a form. So it's going to be in the body. And uh, we're, let's call it email. Okay, and const password. Body. Okay, so I enter an email and a password. So what I want to do is I want to do some, I want to verify, I want to validate that that is correct. So the first thing I need to do is we're going to retrieve by email this user, all right? So how do I do that? Somebody wanna suggest a way for me to access that user? Use a for in loop? Yeah. Okay, so let's um, do a uh, for equals. ID. Great. And if user dot email email, and we're going to have to pass in. No, we no, sorry, no, we don't need to do that. And we're just going to return user, else we're going to return null. Okay, and I'm gonna put this in its own function. So let's create a, let's and so we'll have to pass in the email. So I've got this find user function, so uh, I'm going to use it. Sorry, one second. Right, so we are going to say, we're going to create a user object. And we are going to run the uh, find user with the email that is being passed in. And you know what? We're going to just change this. And I don't have to, but um, to make it less confusing for people. So we're going to find the user. We're going to pass in the email. Um, so that function returns either a user object, which looks like this, 
or it returns null. So if it returns null, if we can't find the user, then we want to do something. So let's do that. So if, if the user doesn't exist, so bang user, we're going to uh, turn res dot send user lists. Okay, perfect. So this return will take us out. So that should be safe. Um, what else? We should also check to make sure that somebody did pass in an email or password. So we don't even need to, uh, we can do that validation right away. So if an email or a password, So we've done that, we've done that. If we've got all of that, we still need to now check to make sure that the password that is being passed in is the same as the password in this object. Great, so let's do that. So what I need to do is, we're going to do if user.password, which is the user that we've, we've uh, pulled in with this find user function. So if user.password does not equal the password, Okay, so in each case here, we have a gate. If you fail this gate, you're gonna be returned out of the function and you're not gonna make it through to the end. But if all of this is true, then we need to set the cookie. And we're going to say, uh, we're gonna set something called user ID, and we're gonna set it to, um, here, let's put a, let's create a user ID up here. Let's just create an ID. Okay. Then I can put, um, Or I, dot ID rather than uh, the entire user. One limitation of cookies is that you can only save strings. So it would be easy or easier for me to just save the entire user object, but um, so I need to get around that. So I'm just going to return. Uh, a single uh, value, which I've set to ID up here. Okay, so I've set it. And once I've set it, we've got all that working. So now that's great. How do I log in? I need to create a login page. All right, so let's do that.
Okay, once again, so what should I uh, put in here? If I want to post something, what do I need? A form? Yeah, so let's do a form. Um, I'm gonna leave the action for now. And I am going to put uh, a label. It's going to be for uh, email. And then within that label, I'm going to put an input with a type of text, sure, and a name of email. Okay, I'm going to copy that. Paste. Now I'm gonna keep it as a type text. Normally I would put type password, but I don't wanna keep anything secret from you. But if you keep it as a type of password, then whatever they type, you, you're gonna see those asterisks. Asterisks, asteri. Okay, and let's, uh, let's put in our submit button. And we'll put in a type of submit. And we'll say login. All right, so now I need a route to this page. Or do I need a route to this page? I think I do. Okay, so let's get that route set up. Ah, uh, yes. So I'm going to come here and I've got this post set up for the login page, but I can also create a, a standard get route. So let me do that. And all I need to do is just change login and render login. Okay, let's see if it works. All right, so I'm here, go to slash login. Okay. Oh, hold on. There we go. I've snippet set up uh, so because I've got several different uh, email addresses depending on where I am. Uh, so I don't like typing out the whole thing several times a day. <clears throat> I'm going to type one, two, three. Okay, so the page reloaded. That's good. Let's go and check the cookies. The animal is set to monkey. But work. So why didn't it work? You have an underscore but for rec. Uh, yes. Do we have a body parser? We have a cookie parser. Oh. Do we need a body parser? I don't know. Form. Don't think so. Oh, yeah. I think I think we're gonna be good. So the thing that I forgot to do is I forgot to put in the action in the form. So what's the action? The action is we're going to go to slash login and method equals.
I, I like how it's called post referring back to my uh, metaphor at the beginning where I was talking about how sending uh, or going to web pages like using a letter. I just thought of that. All right. So let's try this again. Okay. Uh, still no joy. So what? Oh, here. Oh no, that's just giving me. It doesn't have a, a favicon. Okay. So what else could I have done incorrectly? Let's have a look. So I've got Express, I've got Morgan, I've got da, 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 da. I've got my users, I've got my users dot, that, I've got my login, res.render login. Um, if I log in, I want to be redirected to the protected page. Okay, so let's, let's, do some troubleshooting. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to console.log. There we go. Email equals jparson and password equals one, two, three. Okay, so that looks like it, uh, it got set. It's doing a get. Oh, oh. Why is doing the get? <laughs> Let's try one more time. Post what? Oh, it worked. I just need, I, I didn't do anything, I promise, but it works. It's going to be amazing how many times you, you swear you didn't do anything and it goes from broken to fixed. Okay. Yeah, can, can confirm. Yeah, it happens a lot. It was like five days. <laughs> Six guys, five days, and then, yeah. Okay, and we can have a look. The user ID of one has been set. Perfect. Okay, that's cool, but that's not stopping me from going there if I'm not logged in. So if I come over here and I delete my cookies, I could still hit this page. So let's check the cookie to make sure that it exists before it lets me in. Okay, so let's go to our secret page, which is up here. Okay, so what I wanna do is I wanna read the cookie and check to make sure that it is there. So what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to say const user ID equals rec dot keys dot user ID. So what's that line of code going to do? What am I assigning to the variable user ID? One? And yeah. Well, if the cookie were set. So it's going to look for in, in the cookies assigned for localhost uh, 5500, it's going to check, is there something called user ID? Does it exist? If it exists, return that. Otherwise, return undefined because it doesn't exist. All right, so I'm going to get that user ID. Uh, if it doesn't exist, if it is undefined, that. 
we're going to just send them a note denied. So if the user ID doesn't exist, we're just going to boot them out. So right now, confirm, I don't have a user ID. Refresh this page. Rec is not defined. And great, got to get that. There we go. So I am not logged in. So let's log in. Great. So I have to have a user ID before I'm logged in. But um, just checking to see if there's a uh, user ID. Uh, what if I know my user ID, but I put in a different password? What will happen there? Well, what will happen if I try to log in with a user that exists, but wrong password? What's going to happen? That's, let's find out. Bad password. That makes sense? Yes, absolutely it does. So we are, uh, I've tried to log in, I can't log in, so I must have a user ID. Okay, what if, what if I, hmm, let's go, let's just, let's, let's be sneaky. So here we go back to this page. Let's go here. Uh, can I, let's add an item. Let's add, uh, hold on. With a value of one. Okay. So it's going to happen if I go to see secret. Still going to let me in. So either I'm the world's best hacker or more likely my uh, security methods are not fantastic. So I need to do another check. So let's do one more check here in secret. So we're going to say uh, const user equal use users user ID and then we will say Oh, wait. Hmm. Okay, yeah. Just just thinking. All right, so if any user, if there is no user, then we're going to say return. So now, rest.send hacker. So if there isn't a user, users, user ID. Oh, right. Yeah, that user ID is there. I'm just going to change that to one so that this ID and this ID match. Okay. 
So, all right, in any case, uh, yeah, this should work. This should work. Oh, right, delete the cookie. Okay, so if I try to go to secret, it says denied. Not the best user experience here. Let's, let's fix that slightly. We're going to send denied and then we are going to redirect to, uh, We're just going to send them to login. Okay, let's let's do that. So now I'm gonna to try to go to secret. And all right. Oh, res has to be the last thing here. Let's just Get rid of that. Right, because the response is the last thing. There we go. So you can't do a res.send and a res.something else. You must do all your res in one line. So we are going to uh, log in properly. Great. Let's uh, let's create a logout. Make make my life easier than uh, than going and deleting cookies. So let's let's do that. Let's create a logout route. I'm using a get because I'm going to send a get request to the logout. It, it, it might sound like, oh, I'm trying to delete something. Yes, but uh, in this case, uh, I'm deleting it by activating a, a function. So let's go to logout. And... We are going to go and all we need to do in this case, it's pretty simple. We're just going to clear the cookie. And then we are going to redirect to the lot. Thank you, uh, autocorrect, for making my life more difficult. And I just said I can only do one at a time. Uh, let's see that clear cookie dot redirect. I'm just going to chain this on. I think that should work. So if I go to logout, it's going to clear my cookie. It's going to send me back to the login. So let's make sure this works. Put the, because I'm not using the request. Um, so if I go here and I go to logout, perfect. That's exactly what I wanted to have happen. So let's just put a, uh, a link in our page in our secret page, here we go. Bagur. Okay, 
So log in. And log out. How cool is that? Uh, 15 minutes. Okay, enough time to put in a register. So uh, right at the moment, we've got a way of logging in and logging out of our app, but we don't have a way of adding users. So let's put in a register page. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I am going to create a new view. Okay, and we're just going to lower plate. We're going to do register there, and we are going to create another form. And what I'm going to do, because I am lazy, is I'm going to copy this form because it's the same general information that I want. And make, uh, make some changes. So let's make sure we give this a title. And we're gonna say the action is going to be uh, going to the register. So now I am going to post this to a register page. Great. I need to come back here and set my routes. So the first route I need is register. Uh, you don't need to be logged in, which makes sense. And we will just do a uh, res dot render Okay, and we're going to do the app.post. This is going to be, again, very similar to the login, but we're not going to, uh, we're not going to validate whether uh, it's good or not. So it's actually easier. So let's put in our, our post. So what do I want to do? Well, I need to extract the username and password from the post. So that's easy enough to do. I could just copy those two. I'm not going to do any checking. Uh, normally I put validation in, but validation is kind of nitpicky and can take a while. But in theory, I, I will, I could check, does, does this user exist already? If so, tell them no, uh, I can't register you uh, or, or whatever. But in this case, we're going to do a, uh, a best case scenario. This is what we call a minimal, minimal viable product. It does what it says on the label, but it's not completely finished yet. Okay. Um, Super. So what I all I need to do is users. Um, <laughs> yeah, users. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say um, here. 
this is just a way of me creating a, uh, a quick uh, ID for that. Right, because I have one one here. So what I want to do is I want to have the date dot now. I'm going to create it and so users date. Oh wait, 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 wait. Users date dot now. I'm going to create a new entry in users. It's going to equal or email comma and oh id we can do the id as well id colon eight dot now and once you're registered we're going to redirect you All right. Hey, right. let's see if it works. So we're going to go to slash register. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to put in another uh, a at b dot com, and the password's going to be one two three again because I can't think of anything else. Perfect. So let's do let's log in a at b dot com and one two three. I'm a little bit nervous. No user exists with that email. Oh, denied. Denied. Literally denied. Okay. So what did I do wrong? So let's come in here and have a look. So I'm going to um, your console.log. Yeah, I'll tell you what, let's just make this easy. Rather than do date dot now, I'm just going to put in users two. Unfortunately, only two users can log in, but that's that's okay. All right, so let's refresh. No cancel. Let's go back to just register. Now every time my app reloads, it loses all of the information that has been stored in it. So I have to create the new user again. So let's do this. Uh, a at b dot com and one, two, three. A at b dot com, one, two, three. Well, isn't that exciting? So, Let's come here. User ID is not defined. Let's come into the cookies. There are no cookies, okay. No user exists with that email. So what's a good way to uh, test? I know what we can do, we can. Oh, I know what I did. You have to make that a string. That has to be a string if you're using that sort of uh, syntax to parse an object. However, uh, just in case, And the console.log users. Okay. Uh, 
register a at b.com, register, perfect, a at b.com. Let's restart everything and look at my output. So it's got, if I have a look at this uh, console.log, I do see that there is a user ID of two. It is a at b.com. So the information is there. That means my search function is faulty. So let's have a look at my search. Oh yeah, I know. I think I know. So if I come up to log in, so this is login, right? So we're going to find the user, find the user with the address, user.email equals address, return null. So it's returning null. So this is bad somehow, and I'm trying to figure out how this is bad. Uh, we're passing in the address. We're doing find user email, which is the same as up here. So let's put in a console.log. Troubleshooting. Here, we'll just refresh the entire thing. We'll resend. Cannot access user before its initialization. That makes sense. No user exists with that email. That's fine. Let's. Da, 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 da. Ah, the well, console.log returned back to me null. So I know that user did not exist. So let's go back to register. Uh, a at b.com, register, k. A at B dot com, one, two, three. And once again, I see that here. So, hmm, this is curious. So it's returning null when I'm looking for A at B dot com, even though I know that A at b.com exists. And it works fine for jbarson at gmail.com. So that's not it. Users are, okay. All right, as last week, I'll figure it out and I will send you all a, uh, a note on how I got it to work. Uh, I, I'm, it's one of those things that I'm sure I'll, I'll figure out like three minutes after the call. So before I let you all go, on time I might add, um, are there any questions? Is there anything about this scheme that you don't understand? Right? Uh, hey, John, uh, do we have to return uh, the redirect whenever we do? Let me, you have oh, to return? Let me, let me have a look. Res.redirect login. Um, I could put that in, uh, but I, for register, but I don't, 
think that's it. it no, it, I'm just, yeah, I'm just, uh, in general, I saw scan. In general, so remember what a return does. A return does two things for us. It returns a value, but it also exits the function that it's in, which is why I've put return several times here, because I want that function to stop running if we hit that statement. So if the password's bad, I don't want you to continue down here. I want you to stop running. So this is why I've put in the re return here. Uh, I don't have to put the return at the very bottom because the, the uh, response is a side effect. So it, it, the side effect is we are going to redirect you to the secret page. <laughs> Rest up. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Constant.log users, we're going to redirect the login. Hmm. I'll figure it out. Any other questions? No? You're all experts? Okay. Don't ever do login this way in the real world. Reason is, is that everything's in clear text. Nothing is encrypted. Anybody can hack into this and get um, my super secret password of one, two, three. Uh, so there, uh, there, later on in the course, we'll talk about more about encryption and how to get all that set up. Uh, there's also a great way of setting up uh, JWT or JSON web tokens to do the whole authentication thing in a much more secure manner. Okay. Well, with that, I'm going to say good afternoon, good evening, goodbye. I'll miss you until next week. Come on Monday. Say hi to me. Robert Thanks, did. Robert did. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I love you all. Thanks, you know, John. Uh, or, re John. With respect. With respect. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Good. You guys rock. <laughs>